Journey into Mystery number 93 from June of 1963 saw the debut of the radioactive man as a villain of the mighty Thor. He was a nuclear physicist named Chen Lu, who was a communist agent within the People's Republic of China. He's ordered by his superiors to find a way to stop Thor and create a device that will expose himself to small doses of radiation, with these doses growing larger and larger until his body becomes immune to it over the course of several months and he becomes superhuman. Following his experiment, he obtains the ability to absorb infinite amounts of radioactivity to grow stronger. You don't need me to tell you that this would be impossible. Lu would have died from the radiation he exposed himself to, and people around him would either die or grow very sick as well. But hey, comics. Radioactive Man would travel to New York City and challenge Thor to a fight in Times Square. Due to his intense levels of radiation, Lu had managed to melt a torpedo fired at him as he swam to the US, as well as bullets shot out of a gun when he got there. When Thor arrives to take him on, Radioactive Man is even able to reflect Thor's hammer and lightning bolts due to his radiation, and then activate some sort of hypnotic trance using his radioactive molecules or some shit. He's got everything, and his abilities are a bit inconsistent, especially when Thor ends up defeating him with a tornado. You'd think he'd reflect that too or something and causes Radioactive Man to fly back to China and explode on impact like a nuclear bomb. Jesus. Shortly afterwards, Lu would return as an enemy of the Avengers in issue number 6 of their series, part of Baron Zemo's original Masters of Evil. He is defeated by Iron Man, who wraps him up in lead foil fired from an anti-radiation device. In issue 54, the villain would also serve as a member of the team's second incarnation, led by Ultron, named the New Masters of Evil. In Avengers number 130, Radioactive Man would ally himself with Titanium Man, Crimson Dynamo, and the Slasher, also known as Razorblade, though Slasher would end up tricking the other three into fighting the Avengers and referring to them all as, well, yeah. Collectively, the trio of Titanium Man, Crimson Dynamo, and Radioactive Man are known as the Titanic Three. They were short-lived and as villains drew cheap heat, seeing as these comics came out during the height of the Cold War. For the next several years leading into the 1980s, Radioactive Man would continue to be a side villain for the most part, remaining fairly stagnant as a character. He joined the third Masters of Evil, led by Elias Starr, Egghead. He would also go up against Iron Man under the employ of the Mandarin, with his master punishing him for his failure by having Lu punch himself in his own face. She-Hulk was another hero Radioactive Man would encounter during this time, but again, he was placed on the back burner, teaming with other lesser known gimmick characters like Lightmaster, Plant Man, and Whirlwind. In recent years, Radioactive Man became a member of the Thunderbolts, a team of reformed supervillains to take on the Fathom Five, an Atlantean terrorist group led by Lyran who had attacked China. Later in the Thunderbolt series, Chen would absorb large amounts of radiation and be forced to wear a protective suit at all times. The radiation would eventually subside, but during the Civil War event as a member of the Dark Avengers, it is agreed upon that he would continue wearing it, being viewed by the American public as a dangerous foreigner and would be a way to calm their fears. Radioactive Man is a pretty cool character, I like his look, the concept behind him, and his powers open up a lot of interesting possibilities. After his experiment which exposed him to countless doses of radiation, Chen Lu gained the ability to manipulate radiation and absorb large quantities of it. He can fire energy blasts, create force fields, possesses superhuman strength enough to go up against the God of Thunder Thor, and using what is referred to as hard radiation, can disorient his enemies and give them radiation poisoning, which is why he needs a protective suit in some stories, and is usually defeated when the radiation he emits is blocked in some way. Radioactive Man has been on the brunt end of some jokes over the years, I mean he was forced to punch himself in the face by the Mandarin, let's not forget that. 
but I think like many characters I have discussed in my Supervillain Breakdown series, he deserves more attention, and is quite underrated in my opinion. He's been in far too many factions to count over the years, and because of that, hasn't really been able to shine on his own. It's probably why he isn't that well known either, to the general mainstream public. What do you guys think of Chen Lu, the radioactive man? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video and found it insightful, be sure to hit that subscribe button, share it to anyone you know who likes superheroes and comic book related stuff, and become a backer for my channel on Patreon.com to make videos like these possible in the future and help keep my YouTube dream alive. Thank you very much for watching and I will see all of you in the next one. Take care.